Here's Johnny. Close your eyes. This world is not what you think it is. Kill the programming. This world is not what you think it is. Close your eyes. And it suddenly occurs to me, I spent almost all of my life on this. This spinning rock and I've never yet measured how big it is. Immediate begging the question fallacy. So within 12 seconds of his opener in a video that's claiming that he's making flat earthers cry, he's already assumed his outcome in this false dichotomy of globe earth versus flat earth. In terms of measurement, earth's measured flat. He's automatically assuming that he's standing on a spinning rock. That's a begging the question fallacy. But I don't want to spend a lot of money or time so let's see if I can do it in, say, less than a day and for less than $100 to measure the size of the Earth. You'll be measuring it flat. Something that might make all of the flat earthers cry that you can do it so easily and so cheaply. It's so true. It's so true. I was laughing so hard that tears were coming out of my eyes at this dude. <laughs> it is true. Can it be done? Well, let's see. Imagine you're on vacation in America and you can visit two points north south like that. And you can also measure a point at infinity, like, say, for instance, the, the Pole Star. And imagine you've done that at your two locations. After that, it's just a. I'm missing something. Why is he holding a ball up? I don't know. He didn't just invoke north and south. That's respect to a horizontal plane of reference. What is he talking about? Precisely. He's referencing horizontal to describe these directions, but he's holding a ball up. Okay. I mean, it's non sequitur at this point, but I've already pointed out he's begging the question, but now he's holding a ball up like it's got something to do with this measurement. Simple bit of geometry to get the size of the Earth. Cost of measuring the Earth. Let's see. A $6 bubble level. Um, $3 crate. Sorry, what? A $6 spirit level. We're supposed to be Nathan, measuring... you need a nice and flat baseline. Say again. Of course you're going to use a level. You need a nice flat baseline. So he's going to be measuring Earth flat then? And he's using a tool for establishing flatness for $6. Why? Isn't he supposed to be measuring sphericity? Crayola markers and a ultra strong trifold foam board for about $10 from Walmart. A $7 protractor from Staples. A $10 laser pointer from. Sorry, what's the protractor for? We're going to be measuring some angles with respect to levels. Is it just me, or is this already without doubt going to be a flat earth proof? Thunderfoot's about to measure earth flat, isn't he? I said it in jest. He is definitely going to measure earth flat, isn't he? Yes. From eBay. And about $50 of gas money. That's not a speculative list. That's exactly what I used. Some $85. Now, bear in mind, I'm doing this for the first time. And when you're doing things for the first time, it doesn't always quite go as planned. By which I mean on the day and night that I was going to make the first measurement, a giant thunderstorm rolled in. So do you... Are we all clear? Just, just so we're... Uh... Not in any sense of ambiguity later on. Thunderfoot is claiming this as a... What's he calling it again? It's a measurement. So when Thunderfoot will be measuring a flat Earth, he's got no issue calling it a measurement. Correct? Just thought I'd make a Absolutely little note not. of that. It's okay to measure Earth flat and call it a measurement when you're measuring Earth flat and then utilising that measurement of a flat Earth to claim you've claimed a globe measurement with the flat earth measurement that measured earth flat. Okay, gotcha. You think this is gonna put a crimp on my measurements? Good, so we have our laser spot just there. And if we zoom out to our earth, we're gonna be on the equator. So if we take- What's the equator? Anybody know? The, equat the equatorial plane that was measured flat from elevation angles to Polaris. Is that what it is? So he's taking a flat earth concept before he's done anything in his windy microphone. Equator, where'd you get that measurement from? Elevation angles to Polaris. So he's got a flat earth concept that's taken with a flat earth measurement to give him this equator concept. I see. Using quite a few flat earth measurements so far, Thunderfoot. 
This is what it's doing. On screen now. Nicely lit. So you can see what Thunderfoot is doing. He's measuring Earth flat with an angle. I realised that when this charlatan decided to do it, he put it in very, very crap lighting. And said, oh, I didn't really know how to get the measurement and I couldn't get it the first night. But let's move on and then give you half the measurement and show you a spirit level against a backdrop of something you can't see and describe my paper as level. So, so level's got something to do with this then. Yeah, we've got a line along the ground that needs to be level along the ground. Yeah, we're measuring Earth flat here, ladies and gentlemen. There is no two ways about what's going on. Doesn't matter how badly lit Thunderfoot shows the method. The uh, pole star which is super easy to find once you can see the stars of the Big Dipper, in that you just take the bottom two stars of the Big Dipper and they always point towards the pole star, which, if you can see it, will always be due north. Okay. Like, due north? <laughs> With respect to a plane? Like, towards the direction of the horizon when you lay a compass flat on a flat map? That sort of directionality that requires Earth be flat to describe it? Does this, does this guy know what he's doing? You're proving a flat the Earth's left and right. Welcome to the back of my rental car, uh, where I occasionally sleep, and also a laboratory for measuring the size of the Earth. Right, so previously we had our laser pointer, and we were pointing it at the pole star, and this... Uh, what about the other line? Is he not gonna, does he not mention the other line of the angle, ever? Anybody who's watched this, does he, does he just mention the one line and think if nobody notices that there's two lines to an angle, one's along the ground? That no one will notice. He can't. He, he can't mention it because as soon as he does, well, he, he obviously knows that he's lying okay. if he's not going to mention that bottom line. No worries. I'll just put it on screen for my audience that isn't going to be deceived by Thunderfoot Clown and his deceit by omission. This is the line along the ground. It forms part of the angle. It's called a baseline. It runs to the GP of Polaris. That's called a ground position. What is a ground position? Well, it's the point at the zenith of the star if you were standing below it and 90 degrees to your position. 90 degrees being a square box that you could put at the ground position and run along the ground to where Thunderfoot's making this measurement. He doesn't seem to want to mention the fact that he's measuring Earth flat. He just keeps measuring this line and describing this line only. Well, an angle's two lines, Thunderfoot, you deceitful little man. Yeah? You're measuring Earth flat and just thinking that you can get away with not mentioning the baseline. It's part of the angle measurement. This was... I think uh, he's in line with the rhetoric. Flat. Again, I don't think he's deceitful. I think he's in line with the rhetoric. And this is exactly what they teach them. Okay. Well, what he's just been showing is a measurement of a flat Earth. So regardless of what he's about to do on paper, he's just measured Earth flat. Beyond this point, I don't give a toss really beyond this point. What he does on his car is kind of irrelevant to me because I couldn't care less. The measurement was a flat well, no. Earth measurement, wasn't it? Yes, yes, but they they have to measure Earth flat to get their sphere belief. That's part of the rhetoric. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we can go through the advanced heliocentric conversion after deriving the globe itself from the radial value derived from Polaris to give him a radial value to start inferring that he's got parallel light rays to move what he has just measured with respect to the surface of Earth into hell based on having a hell that was derived from flat earth measurements to give him a model to put the angle in hell with. So we can watch that, but I'm going to dwell here for a bit. I'm going to take it off my audience's screen and stay with this instead. This is what he's just done. He's just measured earth flat. Now, while we could just whistle past that graveyard straight into how he now utilises the measurement he's just made with a bit of darkness and a bit of smoke and mirrors to hide the fact he's measuring a flat baseline, to move very swiftly on to seeing how he'll utilise that measurement of a flat Earth to create a spherical surface that he's already assumed to derive a radial value that he already thinks he's got. Well, no, I don't care beyond this point. He's just made a measurement of a flat Earth. Who cares what he does after this? I mean, it's fun telling people on OMI TV about how the process he's about to enlighten us with in the next few minutes is how the Roman Catholic Church created a globe to put you on. But ultimately, the process is now complete in terms of measurement. No more measurements will be made. We've got our measurement off the surface. It was an angle. That's been done. So we've measured Earth flat. Oh, I wonder what he'll do next. Who cares? Yeah. His audience was shown this angle against a darkened car. I'm showing it in the light of day that it needs to be shown. 
It's a flat Earth angle measurement to Polaris. It can't be anything else. It's an angle. Now, these lines that move towards ground positions, in this case of Polaris, cannot be on tangents in space, because then it wouldn't be a ground position anymore. But that's what you'll need for this measurement, as, as slippery, let's call it, with the truth, as Thunderfoot wants to be. You've measured Earth flat, son. I mean, we could. I don't even think it's necessary. We could get into what he does with the measurement after the fact. Do we even need to go through what he's going to do with his measurement? Do we need to see him transpose what we've taken as a measurement into hell? Do we need to do that? No. No, the measurement's all that matter. The calculation's irrelevant. Yeah, so it's game over. Thunderfoot, you measured Earth flat, mate. Now, as I say, we could dwell on what you do with the measurement after the fact, but your calculations will be defying this measurement because they'll be implying that there was a surface that didn't have a ground position to get the measurement from, and in order for it to still function as an angle, you need to put it in the equatorial plane, extended to the celestial plane, in hell. Not where you got the measurement, that would be on the surface. That would be this. This is the measurement Thunderfoot just made. It is a measurement. It is with respect to the surface. It does have a ground position. It will be a straight, flat line along the ground. Earth is flat. That's how Thunderfoot just measured it. I think we've dwelled on the fact that we've already won at this point, and the rest of what he has to say about what he extrapolates out after his flat Earth measurement is irrelevant. Have we pondered that long enough for us to potentially dwell on his crappy measurements and extrapolations after this measurement of Earth flat? Have I dwelled on it long enough? Getting an angle from hell. You're a liar. You didn't like mentioning the line when it was in front of your car, but now it's nice and clear that it's in hell. It isn't. Um, so I'm in America at the moment, this is about 40 degrees. Kind of like the degrees you were measuring off the flat surface, but is now the protractor. So it's a turning of the protractor if you were considered to be in hell. It would be the number of degrees that you turn the protractor. No, but that wasn't what you measured. You weren't in hell turning a protractor when you took this measurement. That's not what you did. But that's what you've got to do to create a globe. Basically turn the measurement off a of flat earth into the protractor. Yeah? What does this I look thought, like? Okay. Here's the surface. Here's the star. Here's the protractor that he stood measuring with. That's now the globe, is it? This is epic. This is a great demonstration of how this process is committed. Great. Go on, whoever that was. I said, high, every time you say protractor, you need to say high school protractor. He's turned the globe into a high school protractor. <laughs> um, and I also know that I've measured that your horizon is 90 degrees to the line to the center of the Earth, so. Uh, <laughs> sorry, a horizon? Uh, you're gonna need to define that, you lying shit. No, that is not a horizon. What, the apparent position where the ground or sea meets the sky? You think the horizon is defined as 90 degrees to the center of Earth? Oh yeah, look at that beautiful horizon in the distance, 90 degrees to the center of Earth, obviously. No, said nobody at a beach ever. Where's he getting this from? Just make it up. What he said makes no sense uh, at all. Exactly. He's making it up. So, so it's a contradiction with regards to what Brian was saying earlier. See, at this point now, he wants his horizon to have a rate of change of slope of zero. But it can't have a rate of change of zero because he's already reaffirmed it. It's the leading edge of a ball. Therefore, there must be a rate of change based on R. This is where they don't know which bit to grab, which bit to reify. And it creates that contradiction there. It is straight and horizontal, but it is earth curve. Can't have both. Yeah, you can't have both. What is exactly. he drawing with a horizon plane to be tangential to a sphere with a point that he's going to draw a line meeting so he can transpose it parallel to the surface with the line going out to space? Yeah. Just let him draw it. Just give us a second. Oh. Perfect. So you see on this diagram, let's make it bigger. On this diagram, He's taking this as his zenith and this as the line along the ground for the baseline. Notice how we've now got a nice clear baseline when it was the actual process and he was measuring it. It was demonstrated in front of a car, but now it's on a sphere with a GP position that's out in space. So if you're measuring from your zenith out to Polaris, let's say that this is Polaris where he's marked north. Can I do it? Just. It's a very, very tight angle. But let's just say for the sake of argument, we can measure this angle with respect to this surface. Right? Well, then what you're measuring is the GP point along the surface to the ground position of the star. Well, in his diagram, 
Have we got a ground position that's on the surface? Nope. It's in space. It's not on the ground anymore. You're paying attention, Jaron. Of the Jaronism channel who couldn't understand this. You don't get ground positions meeting the ground at 90 degrees to the star in space. It's supposed to be on the ground. Of course, on the ground's now curved. And it won't give him an angle anymore. So a horizon could be defined as a 90 degree position at your zenith. No, that's definitely not a horizon. And you haven't got a ground to measure this angle with respect to. What you're levelling to? Tangency, we covered that too, didn't we? What was the spirit level for? To teeter-totter on the top of a ball to give you a point out in space with a ground position to it. No, it won't be on the ground. And the line isn't curved. So you're screwed. This is nonsense. Meanwhile, the actual functional angle is working in hell. That's why all of this rigmarole of claiming you got parallel light rays, like he said, made easier, what with the bit up here on the flat plane that you're actually measuring, the parallel light rays that is going to justify this transposition from an angle measurement he can't acquire to a position on the ground that's not on the ground, down to hell. That's why this whole faff and vague alluding to the idea that it's easier to have parallel something. I just won't say what. That's what this dance is all about, because he's going to move an angle that isn't functionally acquirable from a curved surface into hell on a plane, the equatorial plane. So it can still function as an angle. It's just you're not measuring it anymore and you're not using the one you measured. But we can do that because all light comes in parallel. Remember when I mentioned it earlier? Here it all is. I just drew them in arbitrarily when I hallucinated them. Uh, th the mountains would be on this tangent line and stuff, you know, with respect to sea level, that sea curve that doesn't actually give him an angle and isn't level. Just so we're clear. Nice that he's put his, uh, nice that he's used his spirit level. Oh, how wonderful. I just noticed that. How epic. So this spirit level that you just happen to be using as a ruler, is it level? Because apparently this was the level angle that you just got. The spirit level doesn't look very level when you use it as a ruler just by chance to draw the line that's tangential to the 90 degrees of horizontal that is a horizon according to your non-defined garbage you made up. I mean, you'd think if you were using the spirit level, it just becomes a ruler now, right? Its function is now a ruler to give him lines on a globe that he doesn't have. It's not being used to establish horizontal planes like it was in the measurement. Now it's just been reduced to being a ruler. If you're drawing out the measurement, you'd think you'd have realised how unbelievably stupid it is to use the tool that was originally used to establish a horizontal plane as a freaking ruler. When it's completely level, is it's going to be there. And there, like the tool that was now being used to just draw a straight line, but the tool wasn't level when you drew it. So we've got a horizontal plane where the angle's coming from, but it's a transposition of a line that you drew on a curved surface that doesn't have ground positions when using a spirit level that wasn't level as a ruler. Why wasn't the spirit level level when you were describing how it would be on Earth's surface? Is it because in this diagram you need two horizontal planes of reference? I'm pretty sure that you've got your horizontal plane of reference utilising the angle in hell, because that's why this little dance is taking place. And my pull star is going to be up there somewhere. So that angle is... Sorry, is it just me or have you now got two pole stars? You've now got a pole star here and a second pole star here. Why? Did anybody see two pole stars in his original measurement? Because now he's telling us that latitude is this position with respect to north up north, remember? I highlighted that too. Okay, so we're pretty clear where this north star is. You drew it. Why? Why have we got two north stars? Oh, is it because we'll justify it with all light coming in parallel, meaning that this north star here is actually north star here because we're moving it to the centre of hell after we've measured it with respect to a plane that isn't the surface? I see. Is the one that I've measured. Now, the simple way of doing this is to convince you... You hear him just lie there, Brian? He said, this is the angle I've measured. Did he measure? Did anybody see him in hell? Let's just hear him lie again. Up there somewhere. So that angle is the one that I've measured. Now, the simple way of doing this is to convince you. That, that angle is the one I've measured. He then simultaneously filled in the, this is an angle diagrammatically, here and here while he was saying it. This is the angle. He drew two angles. One in hell and one on the surface to a different North Star that wasn't representative of the North Star in the original assumption that we can use these angles in hell. This is a cluster screw. Can, can confused people confuse themselves? Yes. 
Can no. stupid people say stupid things? Yes. Yes. Show yourself these are the same. You just cut it out and you show yourself they're the same. The Sorry, that was a bit fast talking. Should we hear that again? We just got these two angles. It's just, it's just the same. Mm, okay, let's hear that very concise and open, openly clear about what you were doing when you said this is the angle and then drew two. And then said this is the angle this is the same. Let's just say that again. is the one that I've measured. Now, the simple way of doing this is to convince yourself these are the same is you just cut it out and you show yourself they're the same. The, the easiest way to do this is to convince yourself that these two are the same. Okay, so the easiest way to do it... No, you didn't do it this way. You just measured an angle. How you did it was like this. There's Polaris. There's the baseline. There's, that's how you did it. What, when you say the easiest way to do this, do you mean the easiest way to employ your religious zealotry of being on a ball? This world is not what you think it is. This world is not what you think it is. Oh, oh.